Hi, this is Jay with JOK for Live. Today I'm going to do a little bit more eating, but today I do want to discuss the postpartum depression and depression today with our mental health issues. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the food prepared and together so I'm hungry so I can eat. So I do have my sweet and sour because I have sweet and sour shrimp with shrimp fried rice and two spring rolls. Ugh. Got my shrimp fried rice and my sweet and sour. There you go. There we go. All right. So that was a, I hope, got that thumbnail. I really do. I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to start by putting sweet and sour sauce in the bowl i'm a little lost tonight y'all a little off a little off it's been a while i know i'm rambling on but anyway and the reason why i want to talk about the um i've been said i was gonna do like a mental health video but like today i ran into um a friend's daughter and she had that look in her eye that i had in my eye when i was going through it but see, at that time, I didn't know I was going through postpartum depression and nobody could tell me what it was because nobody else seemed to have those issues that I knew. So, yeah, it was a mess. It was really a mess. And then, like, for, like, years to come, I was, like, real, like, I didn't know I was depressed, still didn't know I was depressed, but I was depressed. And that's kind of crazy. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. So, let's see. Okay. Like this. I do not want to spill nothing. Yesterday, I did a whole freaking video. But, I mean, I guess it worked out for the best because... The food was nasty. I let it be known it was nasty, but yeah. Did a whole like 25 minute video and no sound, but food was nasty. So I, I guess, you know, and then I just wanted just to eat tonight and, and not do a video, but I know I was supposed to do one like during around the time my daughter's graduation and I didn't end up doing one. Um, Cause it was so like everything was moving so fast um it was just a lot going on i didn't expect for it to be like that because it wasn't like that when my oldest daughter graduated it was like easy breezy but this time around you had graduation parties and their parents having you know food and parties you know because the kids was house hopping to the graduation party so, I don't know. I just know it was kind of like a little wild this time around. But it was okay. We got that done and out the way now. I have, we have to get her out for um, the army. And then it's like, yeah. I guess, I guess. I'm just rambling until I can get my food in my mouth. That's too much soy sauce. All right. So, I did the, had to do my prayer. So, I have my sweet and sour in my bowl now. I have my spring roll. Ooh. Have my spring roll. And I have a nice old bottle of Coca-Cola. And I'm finna eat. Can't do that. Mm. I haven't had these in so long. Sweet and sour shrimp.
Another thing when I go back to work, I'm like, mm, mm. When, before I went out for my daughter's graduation, um, we had like this big international group here. Things were super crazy. Wow. But then I come back to work and it's so nice, calm and quiet and I love it. I know it's bad for business, but I just love it right now. I had to deal with them drinking, setting the alarms off, out in the pool area, waking the guests up. It was just a lot. And right now it's making me think, do I need to take my behind back to the doctor's office instead of just like doing a couple of days out of the week or part time and just go back full time? Um, don't get me wrong when I did start doing nights to get a break from the doctor's office it was so lovely it was like a, fre a breath of fresh air um, I was able to get a lot of other stuff done but like right now I'm kind of like missing it So tonight is Wednesday night, the 19th of June. Tammy new show, Tammy Roman new show came out, and I cannot wait to go home and watch it in the morning. I think I'm gonna wake up, or, I mean, go to sleep a little later. I hope I can watch it because <clears throat> the little bit that I did catch when I was leaving, getting ready for work, it was nice. It was funny too. Her husband's um, family came up. Mm -mm. Got my duck sauce for my own um, spring rolling. Uh-uh. I always get something but shrimp, I do not get any beef, any chicken. <clears throat> like, I don't think I probably get like chicken wings from now. Now you can tell when a chicken wing isn't a chicken wing, but I'm not seeing too much stuff with them pulling dogs and stuff in to cook them. I don't want that. I want to know I'm eating the shrimp, I'm eating the shrimp. So, I don't know. I stopped eating like the general torso chicken and stuff. The texture was funny feeling. Um, I used to eat a lot of beef and chicken on a stick. I don't do that anymore. Oh, there's something about the texture that meat. And you have to ask yourself, is this really like chicken or beef I'm eating? So I just stick with the shrimp, something I know. I do the shrimp and vegetables and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> this postpartum depression, it is serious. I don't know, I didn't find out years later that I was dealing with postpartum until I watched Love and Hip Hop. Um, Gosh, I can't think of that girl name that was signed. Mm, hold on. That was signed with Diddy. <clears throat> was it Khalees? I can't think of her name right now. But 
she was lashing out at everybody around her. She would end up crying, being a mess all over the place. But and when she went to the doctor, when the doctor broke down to her, oh, excuse me, why she was doing all of that is she had postpartum depression. Now, mind you, I'm sitting up there looking at the screen, and I went to go see a psychiatrist. And they wanted to put me on medication. I wasn't taking nobody medication. So some of the same stuff, I was a lot more angrier. I was angry. And I used to cry all the time. I guess my, I don't know. I just felt like my feelings was hurt when I wasn't with it. Somebody was going to feel my pain. <laughs> I didn't care. But I used to like be up like 2 and 3 in the morning sweeping and mopping, cleaning up, washing clothes and it was this particular time um, where it was like right after I had my youngest daughter, my mother came down to stay like for a few weeks. So she noticed that, okay, one night she woke up and I'm sweeping by her. She loved to sleep on the sofa and fall asleep and watch the TV. So I'm sweeping and she wakes up and she was like, this shit has to stop. Excuse my language. So... The very next morning, she got on the job and found a psychiatrist. I went to see the psychiatrist. Um, he was asking me questions like, um, do you ever think about harming yourself, harming your kids, or just harming anybody? I was like, I, I would never hurt my kids. And definitely not trying to hurt myself because I got to be here for my kids. I said, but I do think about killing somebody so he sat back in his chair and he's writing on this paper and he he looks at me and he was like well who is it and i'm looking at him like i know he's supposed to be writing this down but it's like oh you i don't know you i don't trust you and what i look like telling my business but you know i went on here and told him my kid's father Tell him all the time. I tried to run him over so many times with my car. He was so arrogant to the point that he would laugh about it. And it pisses me off even more. So of course I used to lash out at their dad. I used to jump on him every time I got. I was just going through a girl now. So fast forward. My brother comes back um, from Atlanta. He stayed with me for a while. And um, he used to do stuff like leave my door open. And, you know, it's a typical, I guess, older brother thought he ran stuff. It was his place. And I had to kind of check him and remind him, this is mine. You know, my name on this lease, you know. But he used to always ask me, like, have you took your medication and stuff like that? I used to snap on him a lot. Um, but I guess a few people around me knew something wasn't right about me. Like him and my nephew's mother was the only ones that would say something. But I'm like, okay, I'm fine. You know, I'm just irritated, not knowing the whole time. I was really messed up. So not only now am I was going through postpartum, at some point, postpartum have to run out, right? So, I'm taking on depression. We're going to say for years. I'm not going to lie. Years. I was dealing with depression. And I'm telling everybody now, like, don't do like me. Go to the doctor. I just didn't feel comfortable with telling them about it. And I know it's, you know, you just got to search for one that's, that's good for you. Because I went for years. And I don't mean no two and three years. I went years dealing with depression. Um, I would stay to myself. 
like when it was time for me to cook dinner, I would come out and cook the dinner for my kids. Like help them with certain things and talk to them for a little while. And and certain time in in, in my household, everybody go their separate ways. Everybody go to their room. So I spent a little bit more time in my room than everybody else did because I didn't want my phone, my evil, my nastiness to just. Because I would flip out. I would just pop off with no problem. If something went right and it didn't go my way and I didn't like it, I would just flip. So, to keep from doing that and mistreat somebody who didn't deserve it, I just stayed to myself. So, my kids, they they wasn't afraid. They, wasn't af they wasn't afraid to come talk to me. But it was just that, you know, when they needed something, they would just come in the room and ask. So... When I noticed my friend daughter, uh, that look in her face, when I noticed that, I put her to the side and talked to her. I told her she didn't have to confirm it for me. She didn't have to say anything right then. I just let her know, I know that you're depressed. I told her everybody, I mean, she's not gonna share her information with everybody. She's gonna have to feel comfortable with whoever she talked to. But just take her time and try to find a doctor and get something done about it. Because when you're dealing with depression and you don't have any help or any medical help with it, it's hell. You're angry with the world. You're always second-guessing yourself. Me, I was just angry. I would want to rip somebody's head out. Um... I didn't want nobody asking me about nothing, nobody saying nothing to me. <clears throat> and that was the time where I went into my space, into my little small space. Now, when I came out and had to go to work and had to do all that, everything was fine. I put on this this, this mask, yeah, everything was just lovely, wonderful. You would have never known. It was just the people that was close around me that knew that caught hell from me. And when I knew, noticed that I was doing that to them, I kind of backed away. Um, I don't think my mother ever paid attention to it. After, you know, because I mean, this was years later. She just thought that I was just sitting up in my room, not doing anything. And she kept telling, like, go out and do stuff. And I didn't want to be bothered with nobody. I didn't want nobody in my face. I didn't want to hear no noise. I just, leave me alone. So, I say that to say this. If you feel like you're angry, you're anxious, any of that, call your insurance company. See what they cover. See what doctors um that their, their network except and go go find somebody for real because when you come out you spend all that time being in that funk and not you know dealing with it properly it's like you lost a whole lot of life you was angry for no reason you know it, it was just no no reason for you to do that now people without insurance i mean it's kind of hard to tell them to go get help when, you know, they can't get it. it. It's bad. But if you do have insurance, I suggest, even if you have Medicaid, Medicare, go find someone to talk to. Because it's bad. You really do miss out on your life being angry, locked up in a room, or just lashing out at people. Because some people don't want to be bothered with you. They're like, oh, that's... That bitch crazy. I don't want to be fucked up with her. Excuse my language, but that's how it was. Um, it pushes people away from you. I mean, it's, it, it does a lot. It, it can really ruin your life. Relationships, if you have a husband or a boyfriend, they don't want to be bothered up with that foolishness. They understand that you're sick and, you know what I'm saying, they, they want you to get some help. And if you're able to get the help that you, you need and you don't go seek it and you still lash out at them, they don't. Nobody want to be bothered with that. And it's not that it's your fault. But you got to put your, your 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 foot in their shoes. Like, yeah, you know, they try, they, they try to sympathize with you for a while. But then it's like, it's something that they can't control. 
it's something that rub it, it's not rubbing off on them but it's like it's pushing them away it's and it's making their attitude be funky if you get what i'm saying you know so two of y'all with the same funky old attitudes trust me it's gonna be a lot of issues going down in the household nobody's gonna like nobody it's gonna it's just put it it's gonna send you there I mean, to the point you maybe want to put your hands on somebody. So I just tell anybody, just don't sit around those pregnant girls. If you're going through depression now, you got your Medicaid, use it. I mean, somebody out there somewhere in your family pay some some taxes. I pay taxes, hell. So go ahead and get your Medicaid and you use it if that's what you have. If you have regular insurance, make sure you sit down and you find somebody that's in your network because yeah i mean it's too many suicides it's just a lot i didn't think about killing myself i thought about killing somebody and then somebody i didn't care for got in my path i mean i would rip them i didn't care i would rip them i would cuss you out and sometimes i still have to catch myself because i'm so like i don't think i just just go so sometimes I have to say, look, we're not in the same situation. We we have moved on, you know, you're older. And I'm not, that don't have anything to do with it. Because like I said, I, I sit, seen the, the psychiatrist once. He wanted to give me medication. I wasn't with it. <clears throat> and so I just dealt with it on my own. And once every, all the clouds, and it's basically like you're in a well. Deep, 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 deep down in a well. Um, you see a piece, a trickle of light. And it's like, okay, I see some light up there. But like, when is it going to just shine everywhere for me? And it wasn't doing it. And I had to keep on. I had to talk to different people on my own, which I did have insurance. I didn't take advantage of it. Like I said, I just didn't. It wasn't in me to talk to somebody. Now I'm kind of like, okay, now that I done read up on different things, um, I have worked in the office with, you know, depression and stuff and seen all that. Not all of them had depression, you know. Some stuff was a little bit more serious than depression. Um, I had to watch how other people react and move through and was like, why? I had to question what was wrong with me. Why was I acting this way? It took a lot. And I, when I say years, it took years. I'm not going to tell you how many years because it's a shame how many years you would have thought with me having insurance, I would have just went on ahead and got it over with so I could stop being in the funk, being a crazy lady out of my mind sometimes. Um, and yeah, I mean, just seek help because I always tell like my kids and this, the, their generation, they're not built like I was when I was like my generation was when we were kids. You could cuss us out. You could do this and this and that. But we'll stand back up and show you like you ain't finna talk about me. Let me show you what I can do. Let, let me make you out of a believer, out of a liar. You, you're not finna just dog me like that. This generation, they, they go and they get in, they get in their feelings. They're a little too soft. Um, and it's not a bad thing, but I mean, when it becomes to protecting yourself and when you're getting older, like going out into the world, you gotta be able to stand your, stand your ground, you know, without the gun. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they do. They they buckle under a lot of pressure these days. Like, I just know I don't have to use force with my kids. I have to. All I have to use is my words, and I can break them down. So when you're able to break somebody down with your their words, everybody get hurt about words, but in a different way. Usually, I would get angry and want to punch somebody. You know, I ain't gonna cry because if I'm crying, get out my way, because I'm coming for you, and it's not gonna stop until I see blood. So. Yeah, those are two different things. I don't promote violence, but you know, um, don't do what I did. But I just ask you to seek help because, yeah, it can get like really, really crazy, really crazy, real fast. And I mean, some people take their lives and that's like I'm saying with the younger generation. They, first of all, they're quick to go get a gun or... Um, they hide behind computers. So we didn't have, we had computers, but we didn't hide behind them. 
you will see us coming. So my thing is the bullying and stuff like that. That's a whole lot of depression, insecurities. Um, that's some mental stuff right there. So, you know, like they say, hurt people, hurt people. The, the saying is hurt people, hurt people. And since they're hurting, they're going to hurt you. And it's even worse because you have grown ass people sitting behind computer, computers bullying kids. And I don't think that's right. And I'm, I'm the type of mother, I'm going to come for you about mine. All of that's gone out the door. I'm coming for you about mine. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Just I just ask everybody. It doesn't matter if depression, postpartum. If you don't feel right and you're feeling off and you're having an off day, I beg you, please, go seek some type of help. Even if you don't have insurance, uh, I know you have your local uh, clinics and stuff like that. Just go see what, what can happen if they have groups for you to sit in and, you know, discuss these things. Because sometimes they have some free clinics where you can be helped with that. But just just check it out. Don't sit down and let them tell you you can't, you know, if you can't get Medicaid, work them. That's what the social service is there for. They have plenty of information. Don't let them lie to you. Make them work work make the money the money they make make them work for it don't let them take the easy way out i mean they, they're they going to tell you all kind of lies so just make them earn their check that's what they're there for they're there to give information out on certain things that can help you in your health till next time <laughs>